Hello, hello, hello. It's very cold. I'm like, I'm cold. Chilly, chilly, chilly. So let me just check that I am live. One second. Apologies for the delay on this one because we're going to get, we're going to dive into LinkedIn. It's going to get deep. It's going to get juicy. Um, but it's let me go. Delay. There we go. Um, so do, 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 do. let's pull up. I know there are a couple of people who wanted to watch this, so I'm just going to tag um, the people who wanted to watch this either live or on the replay. Da, 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 da. I don't know. I've got this song in my head, and I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. But I know the tune, so I'm just like da 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 da. I think it's Robbie Williams' song, but I really can't remember. So I'm really, really stuck with it now. That's going to drive me absolutely friggin' potty. Okay, perfect. So just wanted to pop in here quickly today and talk about. LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a bit of a funny beast and sometimes people find it really, really helpful. Sometimes people get a little bit confused around what they need to be doing with it, how to use it, all that kind of thing. Hi Tina, how are you my love? <laughs> Recording all my videos for me yesterday, much appreciated, much appreciated. As you can see I uh, got home, promptly dumped my handbag on the side <laughs> and did nothing with it. Um, if you know anyone that wanted to be here, will you share it with them? Because I cannot see the original post, which was a bit of a mistake on my part. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to dive into LinkedIn and just go over a couple of the tips because the other day we had this really, really phenomenal post and lots and lots of people are starting to use LinkedIn again. Yay! Um, one of the reasons that I really like LinkedIn is actually because it's really, really well, one of the many reasons I like doing LinkedIn is it's really easy to use. It's a really clunky platform. It doesn't feel as intuitive as, as Facebook does, but ultimately it's actually really, really simple to use and it's much, much better at providing high quality leads. So let's just talk about that for a sec before I kind of go, this is what you need to do with your profile. Um, because there is a big difference between getting a high quality lead and between just marketing um, and, and between what we do on Facebook. So generally what people have been taught to do on Facebook, hey Marcy, I'm watching the comments on my phone, sorry guys, um, <laughs> doing the old laptop what's it and obviously that makes um, makes life a little bit, a little bit challenging. Um, but yeah, so what, what the difference is, is basically we'll go on Facebook and we'll do three to five times a day, post in different places and we'll be engaging and the way that Facebook works is that you basically have access to everyone. Okay, now, hey Bernadine. Um, so that sometimes that can be great, right? Having access to lots and lots of people and lots of connections can be a great thing. However, when we're talking about selling and when we're talking about selling successfully, you don't actually need hundreds and hundreds of people. You need qualified people. And that's the great thing about LinkedIn, right? Because when you're working and when you're operating and doing um, what I would call business development on LinkedIn, ultimately, you are seeking out the right people to connect to. You're seeking out the demographic that you want to work with. And therefore, you know that if they connect with you, hey, Andrea, how are you, my love? Um, you know that if they connect with you, that actually they want they they want to get to know you. They are interested in the things that off, that you're offering. They're interested in building a relationship with you. So it's actually really really important to know and understand the difference between the two. LinkedIn is always going to provide you better quality leads because you want to connect with specific demographics. All right, and it's going to make your job a lot easier. Whereas Facebook, hey loves, <laughs> you've got Louise, Nikki, yay. Um, Make sure you do share it. If there is anybody else that you know wanted to watch this and hasn't jumped in, pop them a tag because I wasn't uh, quite sure on who who was here and who wasn't, right? Um, so Facebook is always going to give you the ability to speak to the masses. But if you are somebody who wants to have targeted leads, who wants to be very, very specific about the actions that you're taking and who wants more control over your results, hey, Jen, how are you? <laughs> I'm like, I've literally just seen a Voxer come through from you, so I'll be doing that afterwards. Um, 
But if you want more targeted results, LinkedIn is going to be much easier for you as a platform to use. Okay. So when we talk about LinkedIn and we talk about profiles, profiles have changed a lot um, on LinkedIn and it is trying to become a competitor. <laughs> no, it's never going to be a competitor to Facebook, but they're trying. Okay. They're giving it their best shot. They are putting in um, live video. They are trying to make it easier to use. They are upping their group functionality they're providing better communities they're doing lots and lots of work to actually make the platform easier to use to make it more successful ultimately when it comes to using LinkedIn there are a couple of things that you really really need to do in order to make sure that you are easily searched to make sure that people are connecting with you for the right reasons that you're not just getting a ton of people who are you know digital marketing specialists and all going oh I can read you your LinkedIn profile for you because that drives me nuts <laughs> omnipresent <laughs> I love it Jen is God <laughs> um, but yeah so you don't want to just be connecting with a ton of digital marketing bots who want to read your LinkedIn profile ultimately you want to be using this as a, a targeted method to approach individuals or organizations um, to go into their organization, into their business life, whatever, and help them make some changes. So the first thing that we need to do when we're looking at LinkedIn profiles, we need to look at your title. Now, mine at the moment is very, very boring. I need to change this um, because the trend for LinkedIn at the moment and what I've seen be way more successful when I've split tested is instead of having sales coach, marketing expert, social media manager, it's actually much more effective Hey Craig, to have helping X achieve X. Okay, so I could, ooh, loving it, Marcy. Visual brand architect. That's fancy. It sounded fancy. But in all honesty, on LinkedIn, it's going to go down better to go, I help this group achieve this. So for example, when I go back and, and change mine over again tonight, I will say, helping entrepreneurs make more money and make more profit in their business with ease. Advocate for unpretentious art. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I used to, uh, when I was in corporate, I used to go and hang out at the Tate Modern um, because it didn't have any signal. Signal was crap in there, so I'd always be like, I'd take my Blackberry and I'd be like, oh, I couldn't, couldn't hear anything. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and just sit there and look at all these random um, installations and stuff. Yeah, exactly, Nikki. It makes it much easier. And the reason it works much better is because people can automatically see when you're trying to connect with them or when they search for, you know, for health or sales or marketing, or whatever, and you pop up in that search, they immediately know who you are, who you help. Are you somebody that's going to be a relevant connection for them? So that's the first thing we need to do is change the, the headline. The second thing that we need to do with profiles is we actually need to look at what is on our profile, what's contained there right now. So if you go onto mine, for example, you can see that there's a description there. Um, Louise, mine usually says, helping businesses attract, convert, and keep customers, but at the moment it's her stonkingly good award winner. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> ah, and yes, yes, I was the proud owner of two Blackberries, not one but two, and I left corporate just as they were getting iPhones, I was gutted. It, it honestly was like a, a moment where I went, do I really want to leave? I could get an iPhone, but no. Uh. Um, so you've got to look at your description. You've got to look at ultimately what's contained in your description and think about what information do people need to know about right now? You know, what, what do they need to know as soon as they jump on? And you've kind of got to think about it a bit like a um, uh, front paragraph to a newspaper. Okay, you've got to give them something catchy, something that is um, designed to immediately pique interest and that also gives them an idea of how credible you are um, or how successful you are at, at helping whoever it is that you help. So for example, if you look in my description, you can see there's a big, big old chunk of stuff about what I do now, but also where I got that information. So there's a, a bit about my corporate experience. I have a ton of links to different articles I've been featured in. And again, you don't need to include every article you've ever been featured in or every podcast that you've ever been featured on, but you want to be including things that are relevant. So if you are working in the Tina 2.0, <laughs> you were never a dick. You were never a dick. Um, but you know, if you, for example, are working in the health and fitness industry and you have a, I don't know, 
uh, an article published in Men's Health, that's going to be way more relevant than an article that you had published in 2016 for, I don't know, um, Wired magazine. Okay, so it's about looking at, okay, who is my target audience? Who is my ideal client on LinkedIn? And making sure that that description piece stands out for them and it gives them something that catches their eye, that makes sense, that makes them understand why you're credible, what it is that you do, who it is that you help, how you could potentially help them, and backs it up with some social proof or evidence, okay? That's really important. As you go down, you start seeing the, the lovely, where do you work, all of that kind of thing. Please make sure that's filled out and please make sure it's done correctly. You know, I often see a lot of people who have still got, oh, I'm still working for a job that I had in 1982. And I'm like, wow, you've been there for 25 years. And they're like, no, no, I haven't worked there in ages. And I'm like, ah, well, it still says present. So make sure you just go through that, do a quick clear up, um, you know, and <clears throat> make sure that all of the jobs are in the right places that they're not marked present if you're not still currently working there that you've got um recommendations for them if you need recommendations etc that you've written down any certifications all that kind of thing and then again you go down scroll keep scrolling i'm like just keep scrolling just keep scrolling um <laughs> finding nemo moment um as you scroll down you start to see the the recommendations certifications section now I would advocate going and getting some recommendations on LinkedIn. Now, they don't have to be from people right now. So it doesn't have to be from people in your current business. If you're thinking, oh, I don't know who I'd ask or I don't have any clients that are coming on LinkedIn or I haven't had clients yet. Make sure that you've got recommendations for your previous roles. I think I've got about 18 on there and all of them are from people who um, I worked with when I was back in recruitment or in corporate sales. Honestly, it's, it's never been a problem. The fact is you then have that 18 people who say, Jess is a good person and she's, you know, she's fine to work with. Uh, Tina, business and career coach training 16 to 19 year olds with career advice and supporting businesses with soft skills training. Good. Okay, that's really, really good. So that tells everybody, especially the education market, exactly what you do um, to get them, get them into work. All right, so that's perfect. So you need to have those basic things crossed off. Then what we need to look at is how do you actually use LinkedIn? And this is where people struggle. So who here, and this is a genuine question, you know, it's, it's not me kind of going, please, please Facebook, give me some more hearts. But um, who here struggles with what to post on LinkedIn? And can you let me know whether it's, can you let me know if it's in a specific area? So is it that you struggle to know what to post there? or how often to post, or let me know, and, and then I can kind of give you some more tailored feedback, but otherwise I'll just go into my spiel. I've had random recommendations. Yes, yeah, it's bizarre. So the difference is, so you can get recommendations by people who will actually write you a recommendation. Um, it comes up with their profile, and it will say, Craig did a great job doing X, Y, Z. And then you get these, um, the kind of LinkedIn recommendations, where LinkedIn thinks, oh, you're good at CRM management, or you're good at, people skills and they get people to endorse you right um jen i'm scared of blatantly posting sales stuff <laughs> okay so the the way that linkedin works is i may sneeze so bear with me um the way that linkedin works is that actually you get to be really quite transparent because everybody's on it to network professionally and that's one of the reasons i really like linkedin it's not like facebook where a lot of people worry about selling or worry about how to proactively start conversations because they're not sure how the person on the other end is going to take it um because facebook is a primarily social platform it's here for people to engage it's here to build communities it's here for friends over the years it's become a platform where we've been able to monetize it you know my Facebook etiquette gets in the way. And, and this is the thing. LinkedIn, you can be your naked jazz hands. I'm going to sell whenever self. And that's cool. People do not mind that on LinkedIn. So in the last week alone, I think I've put up a post about my Ritz event. I had one about um, the book wait list. Um, I think I had something else as well. I'll have to check that out. But 
you can go on there and honestly that news feed will chug over and you are still going to get engagement on sales posts now that doesn't mean you're automatically going to get immediately immediate sales from them but linkedin gives you that opportunity to be completely transparent after all your connections have connected with you for a reason they've connected with you because ultimately you've probably got something that they are interested in that they want to explore so why would you not alert them to all of those amazing possibilities and opportunities that they're missing out on because they're not seeing it in their newsfeed and it's not in their inbox all right perfect so when we're posting on linkedin i like to think of it as is a kind of trifold strategy <laughs> i was talking to julie dennis earlier and uh she was <laughs> she was saying that i always do things in threes so now i'm like i do and I'm, I'm gonna do this in threes so when you're creating content for linkedin you've got to think about a couple of different things one is what kind of content are you going to create what kind of content are you going to be putting out there now linkedin you can pretty much post two to three times a day on the news feed and it's not going to piss anyone off the the news feed on linkedin moves fairly swiftly okay depending on how many people you're connected to obviously it does move pretty quickly people are consistently liking different articles they're going off and reading things they're sharing things they're you know do, doing lots of bits and bobs and so it actually does move quicker than the facebook news feed which means you can get those extra opportunities to post so you've got to think about what kind of posts and what kind of content you want to put out there for me i stick with a couple of times a week i'll do an interesting piece of content so it might be um that i talk about um recently i've been talking about gender pay gap because people have been approaching me about it hey susan how are you and how is the puppy <laughs> like, i want to know everything about the puppy so recently i've been posting a lot about the gender pay gap right hey ali um <clears throat> and that has been really interesting on linkedin it's been really interesting to see the response so I'll post up educational content that is relevant to my niche, gives an idea of my area of expertise, okay? Then a couple of times a week, I'll post something that is a bit more behind the scenes for my business. So if anyone's looked at my LinkedIn profile today, you can see that I popped up a, a picture of um, the Channel 5 News event last night, and I was like, oh, last night was at Channel 5 News. People like that, you know? People like to know what you're up to. Um, it's not just on Facebook that people want to know what you're doing. If it's something business related, if you, I don't know, um, I'm trying to think, if you've just been skateboarding, probably not the post to put on LinkedIn. People are not necessarily going to be bothered by this. But if you've done something um, relevant to your business, if you have been invited to an interview somewhere, if you've won an award, if you have, you know, if you're going out and doing a VIP day, if you're holding a retreat, if you are being featured on a major podcast, all these kinds of things, those are behind the scenes parts of your business that your LinkedIn connections will want to know about. They will want to hear about, they'll be interested in, um, and it would be a shame not to pop them up. You know, you'd be missing out on keeping in contact with these people. Okay bandwidths on my children using YouTube. <laughs> kids, eh? Kids. So that's the second thing you've got to think about is your content. What are you putting out there? Then you've got to think about how often you're selling. So LinkedIn, you can be selling on there two to three times a week. Okay, that three would be the maximum that I would recommend, in all honesty, um, because you will find that as people start to engage with you regularly, as they're starting to follow you regularly, they're going to be watching out for all of your posts. They're going to be seeing them more often. So you want to be selling two to three times a week so they're not just seeing the same sales post again and again and again. Okay. All be smart about sales post and, you know, make it different. Um, think about adding in things like testimonials, using the video function, using graphics, um, you know, sharing FAQs, that kind of stuff, so that it makes it different but also that it keeps it keeps it um, keeps your content being engaged with and it keeps it interesting okay so you've got to have your sales posts and then finally you want to be thinking about how you keep connected to people so facebook is a funny one um when we connect with people on facebook facebook assumes that you've made friends with that person so for the first couple of posts they that that person does while they've just made friends with you, Facebook is going to throw that into your newsfeed and be like, hey, there you go. There's this new person you've connected with. Do you really like them or not? 
LinkedIn doesn't really do that, okay? So if you, if you connect with somebody, if you connect with somebody who you think is gonna be a prospective client or somebody who's gonna be great to network with or somebody who um, you know, is, is a stakeholder or a key decision maker in the organization that you wanna approach, LinkedIn isn't just going to automatically show you their stuff first. So you are going to need to be a bit more proactive on LinkedIn and that means checking in with people. You know, every 30 to 45 days, looking at, okay, who have I connected with? Have I followed up with them? Have I made sure they're all right? Have I organized a call? Have I started a conversation? Because what a lot of people get confused about with LinkedIn is they'll go and add tons and tons and tons and tons of people, but they won't do anything with those connections. So everyone's sending out these boring, bog standard, please join my LinkedIn network with no customization. And then what's happening is they're not ever building a relationship with that person. So that person just becomes a connection. And over time, you forget that you even connected with that person because you're not seeing them as regularly and you're not keeping in touch. Um, best times posting on LinkedIn. In all honesty, it will depend on who you're connected with. So if, you're, if your audience are primarily, um, say like my audience, for example, most people in my connections feed are people who are currently still working in corporate jobs. So their most active time on LinkedIn tends to be lunchtime or later on in the afternoon, like four to 5 p.m., when it would be typically quiet in their corporate job. The people, however, who I want to target and, and who I want to be connected with and who I think would be relevant for the stuff I'm doing now, typically tend to be more active at like random times of day, so like at 10 o'clock, or you know, it'll be something that they do as they start checking their social media in the morning. You know, they'll go through Facebook, they'll go through Twitter, they'll go through LinkedIn. Um, or you will do if you're anything like me, that's, that's all I check every morning. So you'll find that you wanna just un look at when, look at the people you're connecting with, look at when they're posting. If they're posting, they're active, that's when you wanna be putting your stuff out into the newsfeed. Does that make sense? Yeah? when you realize you asked the question. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm like, I do it all the time. <laughs> if you hadn't asked it, I probably would have said it myself. <laughs> um, so you want to be you know, making sure that you are actually following up with these people proactively. Every 30 to 45 days, go through, who have I connected with this month? Where are we in terms of the sales process? You know, have you sent them a message? When when you connected with them with your personalized message, which of course you sent a personalized message because the, the bog standard ones are awful. Did you, when they accepted your connection request, send them a, a little message to say, hey, thanks for connecting. Um, you know, as discussed, I'd like to insert outcome here and send it off. And if you haven't done that, you need to start doing it because obviously it's not their job. If you're proactively connecting with people, it's not their job to reach out to you and say, hey, why did you connect with me? All right, it, it's your job to manage that relationship, okay? Um, yeah, so I send messages directly in LinkedIn. So, and you don't have to have a premium account as well. I know a lot of people are going through, um, or LinkedIn is marketing premium accounts. Obviously, they're about 70 quid a month, so LinkedIn likes to market them. Um, I personally don't have one, have never had one, um, and I've, I've never, bothered with them. I've seen them work, I've worked with them in corporate. I don't honestly think that they give you any real extra elements other than a pretty good way to track your communication and, and to use as like a mini CRM system. So I wouldn't bother with the premium stuff. But yeah, absolutely, I message people directly on LinkedIn. Um, and the kinds of people I message, so I'll look at key stakeholders or decision makers in companies where I think actually they would benefit from um, some kind of talk from me or some kind of sales training. I look at people who I would want to work with from the entrepreneurship space, either as peers and collaborators or potential ideal clients. Um, Nikki, do you just connect with someone or do you send a personalized message? I send a personalized message to every single person. So my personalized message always has the same template and it always says, hi so-and-so, my name's Jessica, I am a sales coach, I work with entrepreneurs or I work with businesses to help increase their bottom line profit. Um, I'm really keen to talk to you because in some reason, I'm looking forward to connect. Looking forward to connecting, like, 
can't talk. <laughs> so I'll always go looking forward to connecting Jess and be assumptive about it. Okay, because ultimately you want to you want to personalize the message. If you don't, you're no different from anybody else. The great thing about personalizing messages is that people will often send you a response. So because you've personalized it, they'll often come back to you. But you need to be tracking that. You need to have like a spreadsheet or something there so you can watch, okay, who have I connected with this month? Have I sent a follow-up message? What's going on now? Um, do I recommend connecting with people who you have no common contacts? Yes, depending on what it's for. Um, so if you are looking at people and you're thinking they would be a great point of contact for me or they would be a great addition to my network or they'd be somebody that I'd want to work with as a client potentially, yes, absolutely connect with them. You can still do that if you go to the little three dots and you click down. Um, there are some, some accounts, even when they're a third connection, that will let you um, connect with them regardless as long as you click the three dots. Some people require that you put their email address in. Usually it's pretty easy to give a good guess at someone's email address, especially if they work at a company. You know, it's usually first name, dot surname at company.com. Um, so it's, it's always pretty easy. But I, I would probably start out with people who are your second connections or your first connections, because again, they're going to be your, your people who already have some kind of relationship with you. They know something of you and therefore they're warmer to you. Does that make sense? Ah, thanks, Karen. I'll see you on the replay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the kind of basic when it comes to LinkedIn. It's not, it's really not a difficult platform to use. And I really want to steer everyone away from feeling like LinkedIn is complicated or that it's difficult to use. It isn't. The thing is, the platform is ugly. It's not very intuitive. And they are making lots of changes. You know, they're putting in live video. They are... Um, trying to make it easier for people to <clears throat> get organic reach. They have um, brought in things like blogs over time and article like blogging type platforms to make it easier for people to get that organic reach, to get more views, to get more connections, all of that kind of stuff. It just doesn't look very pretty. And so it can be a bit confusing to start using. I'm a poet and I don't know it. But exactly, like Jen says, you can upload your email list on there. You can, you know, target those people specifically. You can connect with those people immediately. Um, I'm trying to connect with corporate HR directors to offer executive workshops on health and wellness. Awesome. You know, and you already know that. So it's what I would probably do is I would start with um, industry specific organizations. So, for example, when I was working in corporate sales, I would target by um, luxury fashion and I'd be like okay I want to work with luxury fashion brands and then I would pitch myself in as a specialist and I'd say I specialize in helping luxury fashion brands to improve their technological output for whichever area I happen to be working in at the time okay and that did really really well now you obviously don't have to have that on your profile so you can pick a couple of different industries if you want you could pick I don't know you pick fashion, you could pick pharmaceutical, you could pick whatever you like. And with the personalized messages, you can say, look, I specialize in delivering health and wellness, um, executive health and wellness workshops to large pharmaceutical companies because your, your employees typically are working longer days um, and have less time to focus on health and well-being, but actually it can increase their productivity tenfold, right? Um, Tina, I put on mine that had a lot of things coming up that I thought would be of interest following the new government initiative and I thought they'd like to see it, everyone accept my request. Exactly. And this is the thing, you know, you, you want to be thinking about what are they going to be interested in. It is a professional platform, so you've got to be thinking about what's going on in your industry. Are there industry changes? Are there regulatory changes going on? Um, you know, is there something like the GDPR? If you're in email marketing or just marketing in general, everyone right now is fascinated slash horrified slash terrified of the GDPR stuff that's going to be coming in in 2018. So you want to be thinking about, okay, what is it that I'm connecting with people about? What are they going to learn from me? What am I going to be able to share with them? What's the point in them connecting with me? And then you want to be posting this regular content every day. And you do want to be posting every day on LinkedIn, you know, at least once. If you're not making it a primary platform, then you just want to be posting once. But ultimately, you know, in order to navigate it successfully and land really good clients, you want to be um, 
playing around on there more often, you want to have a consistent strategy, you want to be posting regularly, you want to be selling regularly, and you want to be setting yourself a target of how many people you want to be connecting with um, per week. So connecting with as contacts and also following up with and, and having other conversations. All right. Does that all help? Let me know. No worries, Lisa. I will see you on the replay, my love. Um, <clears throat> so let me know if that helps. If you have any other questions about LinkedIn, pop them in the comments because I'll come back in. I'm going to do a, a live, um, I've got a Q&A session with the Dossies in 10, 10 minutes. Mm. But I'll pop back in because LinkedIn is somewhere that I focus on um, fairly frequently as and when Facebook drives me nuts, um, which <laughs> is, is quite often. <laughs> um, so if you do need anything, please pop it in and I will come and check back in and obviously make sure that I can answer anything. Oh, the first, second connection thing. I'll do that before I go actually. So first connections are people that you are connected with and LinkedIn basically does, um, it works on the six degrees of separation prophecy. I don't know, I don't really know what, <laughs> it's not a prophecy, but it kind of is. So it, it just works on that, um, that thought. So basically, your first connection is people that you're connected to. When you connect to somebody, you then get access to all of their connections, which are called your second connections. So it doesn't mean that they automatically send you a list and go, here you go, here's a bunch of other people to connect to, but it does mean that LinkedIn makes it easy. You don't have to put an email address in for those people, and you automatically get reach to a wider network okay so your third degree connections are the people that you also get access to you have to um, imagine it a bit like a, a, a planet right so you've got a planet in the middle that's your first degree connection okay the ring around the outside <laughs> I cannot do this um, but the ring around the outside is your secondary connections. Those are people that you can still connect with, you can still send messages to, you don't have to use in-mails or email addresses, okay? And then you've got the third ring around the outside of that, and those are the people that you can see. Those are the people that can see your content if the secondary connection likes it, but who LinkedIn makes you work a little bit harder to connect with, right? They might ask you to put an email address in, they might ask you to do the in-mail stuff, um, you know, you can't connect with them all the time directly, but they can see your content. So if your content's really interesting and it's doing the right things, it will draw those people in and, and make them want to connect with you. And they will be able to connect with you. All right. I know. I was just like, I don't, I can't do anything. <laughs> it was a terrible, terrible analogy. <laughs> um, so an in-mail, sometimes LinkedIn will ask you to send an in-mail and that's if, uh, if that person isn't, a second degree connection or a third degree connection, if they are a nothing to you, um, LinkedIn wants to make sure that you're basically not spamming people. And so it asks you to send them an email and you pay for emails. So it basically is, is ensuring that you are paying to speak to that person and therefore you're not just spamming them, you're actually trying to connect with them for something that will be valuable to them and to you. All right? <laughs> Can't believe that. <laughs> All right, my loves. Right, I'm gonna hop into the dotties. I'm gonna go and do a uh, Q and A. <laughs> exactly, you're nothing to me. Um, so I'm gonna go and do a Q and A in there. If you do have questions on on uh, LinkedIn or you're watching the replay and you have questions, please pop them in um, so I can come back to you on them. The replay will go up into the dotty vault tomorrow. So make sure if you are watching it, you catch it within the next 24 hours so that you don't miss out. All right, and I will see you in a little bit. Bye.